forward to making sure that you're well-rounded. And I know that uh, we're looking forward to having you on as frequent as you want to be on. Okay, partner? I appreciate it. All right. Have a great weekend. Thank you, Rick. Appreciate you, buddy. Thank you. Bye-bye. All right. Good night. So, you know, I mean, Rick and I are a lot alike in a sense because, yeah, the eyeball test is how I've always looked at talent, having been around it. But yet there's no downplaying the significance that you have to take other factors into consideration with numbers. We know you've been, you know, we've talked about the fact that Mark Hotel's overwhelmed. He's one of your biggest fans here about all the numbers you throw away. Hey, more power to you. Mm -hmm. I'm being an old school journalist, okay? My writing style was based on a lot of numbers and facts. In order to be credible at anything that you try to do, you got to have enough numbers to back up your opinion. Mm -hmm. I've always shared that philosophy with every sport that I've covered. And I always will be. And, and there's no doubt that that's exactly how you uh, convey. And that's Absolutely. why I think you're as effective uh, as a journalist as you are. But Absolutely. in the end, though, the eyeball test really does it may, work. It means a lot to a lot of people. And I think that's why guys like Ralph Kiner got in, even though he hit a lot of home runs in his 10-year career. But uh, here's the, here's an analogy I'll use for you. Remember when you were a kid and we'd tell our little fibs to our parents, you know, like right. um, why we didn't do our homework and we'd come up with some convoluted reason as to why? We're trying to justify it. And right. I think that's what, you know, numbers in that case do is justify it. I'm not I don't think I should be ostracized for saying this, but I personally think if you take their total game into consideration, Larry Walker was the better player than Derek Jeter. And I'll support it with this. Bob Costas, who we all know and respect, is one of the most, you know he's one of the most again, respected men in sports journalism. Right. You know, he's done the Well, the Bob Olymp- Costas is a baseball guy. Olympics, baseball, the NFL. Anyway, He's made this point, and I agreed with him 100%. If Derek Jeter didn't have those five World Series and he didn't play for the Yankees, you're still talking about him as a Hall of Famer because of the context of the position that he plays. Yeah, but you know what? That's a hypothetical. He played with the Yankees, got 3,000 hits at the Yankees, won a lot of world championships, Mm -hmm. started his career at one place and finished at one place. So we don't deal in hypotheticals. And I'll tell you, Bob Costas is one of the best baseball guys out on the planet. Absolutely. He really is. So, yeah, I do. I mean, obviously, number one in my eyes will be Ernie Harwell, but Vin Scully certainly is right there. Mm -hmm. But Bob Costas is right there. But with that said, we're going to change on to football and Bill. We welcome. Former New York Giant offensive lineman Bill Winters of the show. Uh, Bill, glad to have you on. Thanks for being here. Hey, thanks uh, for having me, Scott. You're very welcome. All right, Bill, you're the only one who's going to talk football tonight, and uh, obviously we had a couple of championship games that took place that led, that saw the matchup between the San Francisco 49ers. And the Green Bay and, Packers. Right, that was the game, and then, of course, uh, we – you know, I had the Titans against the Chiefs. So why don't you break down each game? All right. Well, uh, which game would you like me to break down first? Break down the 49ers and the Packers first. Okay. Uh, well, um, Green Bay does not play well on the West Coast. Uh, and they got gassed pretty hard uh, running the football. And uh, you win playoff games by running the football. Uh, the 49ers did that time earlier in the season, kind of kicked them pretty good. And they just did the same thing uh, in, in that playoff game. Uh, they played smart. They didn't beat themselves. They ran the football to the point where Garoppolo didn't really even have to throw the ball. Uh, and, uh, you know, it allowed uh, the uh, 49ers to unleash the dogs up front. Uh, and they played great solid de- defense and more physical football team and just uh, showed them why they're in the Super Bowl and just basically flat out beat Green Bay's ass. Yeah, you don't spot rule number one. Don't spot anybody 27 points, let alone a team as good as San Francisco that has a good defense and a strong running game. 27 nothing. May, uh, you can spot the Kansas City Chiefs or the Texans or anything with that, but don't dare do it against the 49ers. Yeah, uh, the 49ers uh, play really good football. Uh, they are an intelligent team. Uh, they got a quarterback that doesn't give away games. Uh, you know, the jury's still out of whether Garoppolo, if he gets behind, can take a team down the field and, uh, um, you know, throw the ball around uh, and take them uh, to a championship. Mahomes has proven he can do it on two separate occasions. But when you've got that ground game, uh, that allows the quarterback uh, to hit open receivers uh, because the receivers are allowed to get separation because they're going to screw eight guys down the box and have to play the run and respect the run. 
and that's why the receivers are so open for Garoppolo. And that's exactly why the Rams were in the Super Bowl last year, except uh, the Patriots figured out a way to beat them uh, by playing a six-man front and the wide nine took the sweep away from them, and the quarterback did not progress. So, uh, you know, the, green, uh, the 49ers were able to run the football, and when you run the football, that's what wins championships. <laughs> All right, let's go on to the other game. Lewis, did you have a question first? I did, and Bill, first of all, hi. I know you sometimes think I'm MIA, hey, but um, I'm here. So I wanted to ask you, because one thing I've been interested in following this season is Garoppolo's progression in my eyes, but not only mine, yours, because I remember, I believe we had a talk, maybe it was after San Francisco lost that first game of the season. If I'm not mistaken, it was a Monday night game. They had started 9-0. and and you had said that, you know, while he has the makings of a good quarterback, he, he's still raw and there's a lot you want to see in him. How has that changed now that he's in his first really full season as a starter, he's helped his team, you know, make it all the way to the big dance? Um, they're playing well as a team. And, you know, you have to have all components playing well in a team. But he still has to prove that. So nothing's really changed, Lewis, to answer your question. Uh, sooner or later, he's going to have to uh, take a team that's, you know, way behind, okay, and throw the ball and not rely on the run game. Uh, and, you know, we have to see whether he can do that. He has yet to have to do that. And that's just a testament to how good the team is and their ability to run the football. They're also healthy. So uh, they're running on all cylinders. So hopefully it's not going to be a factor in, the, in this game. But if, uh, you know, they get behind in this game and they have to, uh, you know, throw the ball to get back in it because you're down uh, or, you know, keep up with Mahomes, uh, he could be exposed, uh, you know, so the jury's still out. So, I, I, you know, I like what he's done so far, but, you know, he hasn't convinced me yet. Uh, we're, we're, we still got to see, you know, uh, when they play one of those games where they, he has to bring them back from maybe a two or three touchdown, you know, game, whether he can do that. All right, let's go on to the second game. We had the Kansas City Chiefs and the Tennessee Titans. Tyson, the Titans looked good early, you know, and got ahead. But then all of a sudden, Kansas City, when they got rolling, they weren't stopping. Well, it was the same thing that happened when the Texans played in the week before. Uh, you know, when you got Mahomes back there, uh, the reason those guys play so hard, okay, is Mahomes covers up a lot of inefficiencies. Mm-hmm. Uh, and, you know, because he can just, when, he, when he, he gets pressure, he kind of drifts back in there, throws off the back of his foot, and can make some incredible throws. So, you know, you're always in the game when you have a quarterback like that. All right? So, uh, you know, it, it's fun to watch. Uh, you know, uh, we're going to see how it plays out. Uh, you know, I'll give you who I think is going to win the game in a minute. But, uh, you, know, uh, you know, Patrick is a very unique talent. Uh, he's definitely the MVP of the league. Uh, you know, and uh, it's going to be fun because, you know, you're never out of it when you have a kid like that back there throwing the football because he's so unique. Sort of like, reminds me of Curry hitting them threes. <laughs> well, that's <laughs> true. Just, well, just well, answer, you know, what else are you going to do? Just keep playing defense and hope the guy, you know, throws a pick or makes a mistake. Well, what I liked what I saw with Mahomes on Sunday was the ability to use his legs when he needed to. So, you know, he uh, you get that one or two critical – uh, first down by using the legs, it fires up the rest of your team and it becomes a major league domino effect, Bill. For sure. And I'll go you one better. Go ahead. And I picked up on this. The real good quarterbacks, and this is what you know, we're going to see about Garoppolo, but with Mahomes, you know, when you drop back, you cannot look where you're throwing. Mm-hmm. Those defensive backs will compensate for that and they will drift. You see that a lot with the rookies. All right, so you got to look guys off. Drew Brees is the best I've ever seen him. Mm-hmm. Right? But the reality of it is when Patrick drops back, but he is so far advanced that a lot of times he's not even looking where he's throwing the ball. He's looking at the defender. And the defender can't get a read on him, and he's actually throwing uh, at the defender, but the receiver catches the ball. Now, mm-hmm. you know, that's like taking a guy that's got can look people off with their eyes and, 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 and stepping it up a little bit more even to a more advanced uh, look off. Right. Can you imagine being a defensive back trying to read a quarterback's eyes and the guy's looking right at you and you can't get a read on where to break and the guy's throwing it right at you and then the receiver catches it? Yeah, that's cool. Yeah, that's another thing that DBs. Yeah, so who, who the hell knows? We could see the christening of a, 
uh, you know, a quarterback that uh, is going to go on and be a dominant uh, player that's very accurate, or you could see a guy that's going to continue to battle, you know, and have to win a Super Bowl because he can't overcome a really good team. Well, I'll give you two words for that, Bill. You ready? That's called Tylenol yeah. territory. <laughs> What's that? Tylenol territory, but, but brother. Tylenol territory. Well, here, here's here's my solution. Okay. If a quarterback is running for his life, he's on his back, it's not a problem. <laughs> right. That's true. Okay? I mean, no disrespect against Tom Brady was ripping everybody up until he played the Giants. Right. The guy was getting hit a lot. Mm-hmm. Okay? Uh, it's a complimentary game. Uh, Mahomes is very, very dangerous. Yeah. Okay, uh, they're going to have to have a game plan where they're going to have to make him stay in the pocket and not, you know, and kind of contain him. So you see really good defensive ends, you know, and I learned this from uh, the head coach of the Patriots in the clinic. Uh, the really the worst play in football is when your defensive end rushes up the field and gets past the quarterback. Right. Okay, then the quarterback can break, contain, and roll out and do all that stuff. So if I'm a defensive end, I'm rushing up the field but I'm making sure that I'm rushing up the field in an alley so that Mahomes can't literally roll out of the pocket, get outside the pocket, and hit those big ones. Okay? So, uh, you know, that's one of the reasons how they uh, contain Lamar. All right, so that's one of the first things I'm going to look for. Okay? okay? Uh, so, that, you know, it's one of the things I wanted to add. Did you know that Patrick Mahomes was a 37th round pick of the Detroit Tigers in 2014? Sure. This old man was a great baseball player. <laughs> Boy, you're not against past two winners. Now, you want, you know, this is what frustrates me. Here, here, I'm, this is what frustrates me. I'm watching this guy in the draft, and I'm sitting there going, they they got to draft this guy. This guy's the best quarterback in the draft. Mm-hmm. And yet you've got all these people to get paid this living, and they can't figure it out. Right. That's why I'm saying there's no – trust me when I tell you, I've been around the best. Yeah. Spurrier was one of the best coaches that I've ever seen with quarterbacks. Mm-hmm. I was a quarterback in high school. Okay, I've been out there snapping for extra points and field goals and snapping for seven and seven. So you hear the conversation, right? Okay, I, I remember Bill Walsh. Okay, and his and his all his offense was was instead of handing the ball off, we're going to throw short passes right. for our run game. All right. So the reality is, John Lynch has built a hell of a team. Right. He's built the team from the inside out because he knows that a pass rush is the most important thing. And God does not make those people. Okay, every year there's maybe one or two guys, draft choices, your Reggie Whites, your Bosa's, you know, your, your Clownies, those type of guys that can rush the pass and they're genetic freaks. All right, you got to go with those. Every once in a while you'll find a quarterback that's an anomaly like Mahomes. And I'm sitting back and going, this guy's been throwing the ball at Texas Tech so his arm falls off, okay? And the, the scouts can't see that it's going to translate to the pros because he's not fundamentally sound because he can throw off his back foot. He can make all these throws. Hell, he's so good. He's throwing and looking at defenders when he's throwing the ball, okay? So it's a new breed of cat playing quarterback. And right. so we think that some of these teams will be smart enough to you know trade up and get them. Uh, you know... And that's why I like, you know, I, I sit here and I, I suffer with the Texans. Because I sit there, I love Deshaun Watson. I right. love him. Mm-hmm. But I would take Mahomes all day long over, over uh, Deshaun. Okay, because of just, you know, his ability to throw at different levels with his arm. Right. And I'm saying, why can't they see this? All right, and you have teams that pick on other teams. Like the Texans, the Philadelphia Eagles always trade up and get better linemen. And, 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 and guys, we had, to, we had to give half our team away to get funds. Okay, we had a left tackle that could have played easily. It was in the draft, but the Eagles traded up and got in. So two years in a row, I've watched this lose out of the quarterback and a left tackle. Okay, maybe that's one of the reasons why O'Brien's cleaning house. Mm-hmm. All right, Lewis has got one more question. We only got two or three minutes to go. You can save your Super Bowl prediction for Thursday. How's that? Go ahead. Not that's even good. not even a question. It's just a proclamation. I had this debate with numerous people, and I asked you and I asked Bill about this earlier in the season, who you'd rather take, Lamar Jackson or Patrick Mahomes. And when you assess everything that they can do on the field, I came to this conclusion, and it's true. What made Aaron Rodgers so great in his prime, and I still think he's a top-five quarterback in this league, is that the best quarterbacks can make plays happen. Patrick Mahomes, whether it's the game against the Chargers when he looks back at a ref and then drops back for 45 yards, 
or he's throwing footballs out of the stadium in practice, or he's breaking two tackles in an AFC championship 